What is up, YouTubers? So I am back with the M Killer series. So I know I haven't been posting lately. It's been kind of hectic working two jobs and just editing and all that stuff is kind of difficult. But um, behind me, I have a N54 block that I disassembled for you to get up to speed on that process. Go visit my Instagram at blueprint underscore auto. But um, yeah, so basically I had the motor sent to the machine shop and not the motor, just the block basically. Had it cleaned, had it decked, repaired some broken uh, threads and also measured and balanced the pistons and the rods, things like that. You'll see later on in the future episodes, but right now we're focusing on installing the crankshaft. So I got the engine in the engine stand right now and um, the bed plate is just on there temporarily. We're gonna remove that bed plate. So let's go over the tools and things that we have. So I have the crankshaft laid out on the table there. We have brand new main bolts, brand new bed plate bolts, and we have the main bearings from BMW, and we have these oil spray nozzles. I didn't need to replace these, but I just wanted to replace them. They weren't that much. But um, basically, you can't just throw bearings inside of these motors, right? So if you know anything about these N54 motors, you know they're kind of complicated. So there is a stamp on the crankshaft. You're going to have to remove your oil pan to see the crankshaft, but you can barely see it. There's a series of numbers here etched into the metal that indicate what bearing colors you should be using and also for the rod bearings you can't really see them right here but um maybe i can shine the light on it for you guys where's the button okay so if i shine this light just the right way i could see it but you guys can't see it for all technical info, you're going to have to visit newtis.info in order to get the BMW spec sheets that I have here. I just printed them all out. So let's go over something real quick. There's a serial number on the crank and there's also a serial code on the block itself. You're going to find that, that code on the exhaust side near the water port and it's going to be a series of letters a b or c's and over here in my case it was b a a a a a a whatever all a's so the spec sheet shows you where to look for these serial numbers so once you have the the, the numbers the ones and the twos and the b's and the a's and the c's or whatever you're going to make something like this chart basically i had two one 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 two i had b a a a a a a so you get the classification b2 a1 a2 etc and each digit refers from the front of the motor to the back of the motor So if we go down into the spec sheet, right, they're showing you the different halves of the bearing shells. Like, you know, one has a groove, one is flat, and then where to find the, the letters that I was talking about. And then we go down into some more spec sheets. All right, so we have this classification chart. As you can see, A1 crankcase yellow, A1 crankcase lower half yellow. So based on the numbers and letters, it's going to give you a combination of bearing colors. Now you have to take into account that, let's see, one, two, three, four. The fourth journal on the upper portion of the block has a thrust bearing. So this is a special type bearing. And for some reason, the position number seven is also a special bearing. You'll see once you start ordering the parts. So I went ahead and I made this little chart. So this is my chart that I came up with. 
Got the uppers on one grid and the lowers on the other grid. Classification, B2, A1, 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 you get the point to A2. So, I wrote them down. B2 was green on the upper, green on the lower. A1 was yellow on the upper, yellow on the lower. But for number four, it was a little different because number four upper is a yellow, but it's a thrust bearing. And then if you skip down to like number seven here, you're going to see yellow on the upper, green on the lower. So each bearing has a different part number. So for example, um, green upper is a 38 and a green lower is a 034. I just use the last three digits of the part number to identify. And, it, and now you see my thrust bearing is an 858. So I kept this grid and I ordered the bearings from FCP Euro. Their catalog system made it a little easier to figure out because it was pretty darn confusing at first. So um, I just laid them out in the order I was gonna install them from the front to the rear of the motor. So you can see the part numbers like this ends in a this thing would focus a 038 037 our thrust bearing is an 858 etc so we got them all laid out upper lower upper lower upper lower etc so the first thing I need to do is reinstall these oil sprayer nozzles these help lubricate the piston skirts while the the pistons are reciprocating inside of the cylinder um, we also got this Lucas assembly lube and this torque angle meter because if you look at some of the torque specs it says like 15 newton meters then 90 degrees of rotation all this information I printed out from newtis.info so basically the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this bed plate and we're gonna discard these old bolts the machinists just use these bolts to hold the, the block in their machine. Like I said, you gotta replace the bolts, it's very important. So we have the new main bolts and the new bed plate bolts. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this bed plate so we can install our oil nozzles. Oh, gotta loosen it. And just crack them all loose first they're not they're not super tight because the motor was disassembled okay we're gonna install the oil sprayer nozzles we have a six millimeter allen and it's gonna be torqued to 12 newton meters there is no rotation with these guys here now, as far as the orientation goes, I'm not sure. Probably gotta look it up real fast. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop them in hand tight first. <clears throat> okay, so I angled the nozzles in the center of this little recessed area. You're gonna see it on the, um, the block there. So I'm going to tighten those up to 12 Newton meters and holding that nozzle in that, that orientation. Try to get these gloves on. Start with the first one. Seems like it's, it wants to move. We do this, we run them down all the way. So the next step is to um, install the upper mains and you got to know which side is the front and which side is the rear of the motor. So basically this side over here is the front and this is the rear where wherever the transmission bolts to is the rear of the, the engine. So if we're going to get our chart. So 
So this is our trunk, right? So it would help if I was to rotate the motor the other way. So we're looking at it in the same orientation as the car. All right, so I turned the motor around. So now this is the front, this is the back. Just like how it is on my car cylinder. Well, journal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this one up here is for the front crank seal. So we're going to go with green ending in 038 for the first upper. So here we have 038. We're going to go ahead and open this up. So as you can see, it has those two holes and it has that groove in it. That's how you know it's an upper. Now you have to pay close attention to the tang. You can see the tang indication on the block. So you want this surface to be clean and also the journal surface to be clean, no grease. And um, if you look carefully at the bearing, you can confirm the part number just in case they put it in the wrong box you can see what the part number is on the bearing itself so if you look at the side profile of the bearing you can see that this is indeed a green bearing and because of the design you know it's an upper so tang to tang just gonna drop that in there Make sure it's flush like that. And we're going to move on to the next one. According to our chart, the next one is a yellow 37 upper. Okay, we got 37 here. I probably should have opened these ahead of time. same thing and then if you look at the side it's a yellow so tang with the tang next on our list is another yellow 37 upper At this point, you guys get the idea. Yellow stamp on the side. And you can see the hole lining up. go on to the fourth journal it's gonna be a yellow but this one is a thrust bearing so this one should look a little different as you can see it looks a lot different and you have that yellow indication there as well and the line up the tank one we're on number five it's a uh, another yellow yellow upper
Alright, the next one is going to be another yellow upper. Alright, and then the last one is different. For some reason, journal number seven is different from the rest. So this one is a 29 green upper specific for journal number seven. So you can see it's a yellow. But for some reason, okay, I see the difference. Journal number seven is much wider, so that's important to note. All right, cool. So all the uppers are installed. Now we can put some assembly lube and start installing the crankshaft. So we're just gonna go ahead and start dropping the lube. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to make sure the crankshaft is clean. But for you to note the orientation of the crankshaft, you know, the back of the motor, front of the motor, this hole is an indicator that that's where the crank sensor goes. So you have this ring that needs to be with that hole. That being said, the front crank has the stamp with the information goes towards the front of the motor. So I'm going to clean this up real quick and then you guys see me drop it in. Oh crap, this way you gotta pay close attention. The front bearing, it slipped, I guess, when I dropped it in. Gotta try to sit that back in there. Like glass, baby. We don't want too much lube on this area, so we're going to wipe that down before we get the caps on. Alright, so... This is the bed plate. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then we are going to um, drop the bearings in, lube them, and then we're going to put it on to the block. So I just got some blue rags and some brake cleaner. Let me start cleaning up the surface. Remember that bed plate sealant has to come in here so this surface has to be as clean as possible. You can see like they use some um, different kind of material here in the
Oh, yeah. In the little the cap part of this thing, I'm looking at this area in particular. It looks like I might have to use a thrust bearing on the bottom. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look into that. If we do, we might not be able to install the crankshaft to uh, the bed plate today because something I may have overlooked by accident. Because this one is definitely looks like it uses a thrust type bearing. I'm gonna be pissed. but I'm gonna try to clean it until this thing is like clear free of contaminants all right now that I got this thing all cleaned up it's important to make sure these two nozzle injection sites are clean as well so now we got to identify the front and the rear this is the front because this is where the timing chain flows through and that's the rear because that's the front. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go back to our chart here. So now we're working on the lowers. So in position one, which is down there because that is the front. Yeah, let's turn this around so we don't get confused. Alright, so we got the front over here now. So a green lower is a 034, which we have right here. So we got the green indication, the tang shows you the proper alignment. Make sure this is position number one. We're just gonna snug that in there. using a rubber mallet. Yeah, that thing is like, I cleaned it so good, it's like hard to move now. There we go, the wood inside did the trick. It's a green 26. Even the, oh, I didn't even notice that the package had a color. <laughs> it's a green plastic. Those are yellow plastics. Alright, now I'm going to research this lower portion and see if it uses a thrust bearing. Hopefully not, but if it does, we're going to have to hold off on this build. Okay, so it turns out there's no thrust bearing on the lower portion. So we're good. So now I'm going to go ahead and start putting some assembly lube on these bearings. does it I think we're on there so now 
next we need our main bolts. They come in a set. Well, actually, I, I think they sell them one by one. So we got 14 main bolts. Before you start installing any type of bolts, you always want to check with the torque specs and installation methods because you don't know if they have to be lubed, if they have to put thread lock, you know, stuff like that. So I'm just going to double check the torque specs and then we're going to drop the bolts in. Alright, so I got the spec sheet here. Okay, main bearing bolts, steel bolts, grade 10.9 and 54. They're M10 by 100. It says replace bolts. So the joining torque is 20 Newton meters. And there is a specific pattern you want to do this. Okay guys, so we have our sequence. You know, one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm gonna start dropping the bolts. Alright, first thing you want to do is just run them down just barely and then we're going to torque them initially to 20 newton meters. Now is a good time to start following our sequence. So um, one is here. Okay. Two. Ay, careful. Um, three. Four. All right, guys. So. Got my torque wrench set to 20 newton meters. Now we're gonna start the sequence. Okay, I believe this is the center. I'm gonna use my Sharpie just to mark the ones that I already did. So um, we're gonna start here, number one. All right, number two. So we're going to mark this, we're going to mark that, then we're going to go to number three.
got a little wrench already put them shits out. Let me do it anyway. Definitely do that by hand. Okay guys, so I got this torque angle meter from AutoZone. It's an OEM tool. I set up the little anchor using a 17 mil socket and I got my half inch ratchet. Now I'm just gonna rotate this until it hits 70 and then that bolt will be torqued to spec. No need for you guys to see the rest of them. Just make sure that you're following the sequence. One, two, three, four, etc. So it's my first time using this. You're gonna see how well it works. Okay guys, so I was forced to buy a new torque wrench. Supposedly this has the angle measurement. I was searching online. It said that Lowe's had one in stock. So I was like, really? So if you look here, foot pounds, MKG, Newton meters, inch pounds, and um, oh, those are conversion tables. But um, on the box, it said angle. Let's turn it on. See that? 360 degrees, Newton meters, inch pounds, foot pounds, kilograms, angle. That's what we need. We have our two replacement bolts from BMW. So we are going to try this again. We're going to remove these two. But first, I'm going to test out the angle on this bolt before I remove them. I got it set on 70 degrees. 